Hey guys, welcome back to another Mod Bros video. This is my Mauser fire, more or less. Uh, this is a blaster that was built off of Chris's Mauser fire idea and whatnot. Uh, but I took some artistic liberties in how I wanted to build it and then also did a few things differently. I'm still running katanas just like he is because it's the one half length mag that I have. Uh, I don't personally think katanas are the best, but I'm not. <laughs> I'm not gonna buy towns just so I can have those because I think katana works fine for what I have and I got it with a Cita. But basically it's a modified sharp fire that has a brass breech and then a homemade magwell to feed off of mags. So the sharp fire is a very interesting blaster to mod. For one, it's kind of difficult to get good performance, which is where I'm sort of at right now. I'm not getting the best performance. So I'm a little unhappy about that. But then also getting the mag to feed properly is also an interesting thing. I kept having issues where the magazine, because it's a katana, was getting pinched by the magwell and so it wasn't feeding very well. And so after a lot of time, and this is a custom made magwell out of two pieces of polycarbonate and then another one on the front and then some foam just to help keep the mag in place. There's no actual mag release. So the mag itself, when it's inserted, is purely held in just due to friction from the foam. And I mean, it's held in there nicely. It pulls out easily. It's not going to gravity drop or anything. So there is a benefit to having a magazine release, but I think this is fine for what I wanted and it definitely works well. Uh, so you guys can see, now that I have the breech open, it's a standard sleeper brass breech and whatnot. And I like the sleeper breeches because instead of pushers for one, I think they're easier to close because you don't have to push the dart into a tight fitting barrel. And then also you should have less dead space since the dart is sitting here compared to when it sits here with a pusher breech, you should have less dead space. At least that's my thought process behind making it. And the barrel goes to about here. Uh, I was trying to keep it short because I made it all the way to here. And then I was talking to Chris cause I wasn't getting very good performance. And he recommended that I shorten it since the dart is held here instead of here. I'm going to need less brass in order to get the effective barrel lengths. Currently it has 16 coils of a Hillman 62, which should be getting me really nice performance. It has a really good air seal. When I, when I had the brass all the way out to the front, I could plug it and hold it for a couple seconds before it released all the pressure and whatnot. So I'm definitely happy with the air seal and it feeds from the mag fairly well. So I have a little epoxy putty right here. You guys can't really see unless I get the angle angle well right there that little epoxy tab i had four of them but three of them broke <laughs> this was the only one that left so that keeps the mag from going in too high and then you can just close the breech simply like that and it chambers really well and it fires nicely it it fires well currently on the lego die chronograph we've only been getting about 120s to 140s which is sad because i was hoping i could get this thing to be 200 and it would be nice primary to use as a pistol because this thing is comfy and is super light compared to like a retaliator like a retaliator is no by, by no means heavy but then holding this and then i picked up my retaliator and i was like wow this thing is nothing i'm like priming this is really easy i love the slide on this but i'm just not getting the performance that i want i ordered a 12 kilogram worker spring from out of darts so that should be here in a couple days to hopefully maybe get better performance i don't know about this spring it's it's a little too short for uh it, it, it rattles a little bit once once i fire it the, sh the spring is a little too short to push the plunger head all the way forward so when it's after it's fired there's a little rattle so it's a little short but it's still getting full compression so i can't add any more sadly that's a good addition i can't add any more of the 62 helming because it's already at full compression when primed unless i do some weird extension to keep the spring rest moving back further I may try to double up the spring with the smaller one that goes inside the 62 Hillman, but I will do that after I test the 12 kg spring. Uh, but yeah, I definitely like this blaster. I would really love to be able to get better performance. I was hoping I could extend the barrel all the way to the end here and make like a Merlin and get really nice accurate shots, but it's really just not that great. And with the FPS that it's getting, it doesn't really have a purpose <laughs> in my mind because it's only getting not even getting over 150 with half lengths. I don't really see the need to use half lengths under 150 and where we play, we can use full lengths at around that speed and it's fine. But the only time I would want to use half lengths would be if I was using like, we were playing outside with like an FPS and it was like 250 or something. Which sure, I don't think this will get to 250. Cause not even Chris has been able to do that. But Chris has gotten 200. So I would hope to be able to get to 200 FPS with this thing. Cause then I can use it outdoors 
It'd be really nice, uh, really compact, lightweight blaster that I can run around with and get a nice rate of fire out of. Uh, but I guess we can just fire off a few chrono few darts over the Lego DIY chronograph that we have here. Oh. So, <laughs> if he, the creator of this is watching, we don't know what we did, but it's finicky to turn it on. <laughs> the switch doesn't, <laughs> the switch doesn't always be on when it's in the on position. I don't know if we did something wrong. It's so you sort of have halfway position. Yeah, you sort of have to fiddle with it, and then sometimes the screen doesn't turn on. Uh, so the Lego DIY chronograph is made for uh, any size of darts. So we're not going to have any issues with that. But I have uh, several worker Gen threes, and then one ACC Gen ACC dart loaded up that we can fire off through the chronograph. Tell you guys what kind of performance we're getting. <laughs> uh, One thirty-eight. So again, like. Not really the best performance. It sounds like it's doing really nice. 119. So it was getting 140s earlier, but then I greased up the plunder tube and it dropped down into the 120s for some reason. Uh, and then it dropped down to the 120s, which is disappointing because I feel like it should be getting more, but 114. But it's staying fairly consistent around the 120s. <laughs> 114 again. And then this is a half length ACC dart. 138. So I think the ACCs are getting a little bit uh, uh, more speed just because they're more aerodynamic head or maybe they're lighter or something. They lighter. Yeah, they're a little bit lighter. So the ACCs are getting a little bit higher speed and whatnot than the workers. But it's in around that ballpark of the 150 FPS wars, which cool I guess <laughs> I don't really care it's just sad the performance that's getting uh yeah so I don't really have much else to say if you know ways that I can improve the sharp fire leave a note in the comments I need to work on the breach a little bit